creation studio vlog I think this is number five now um, can you tell I've been working with little ones all day I'm counting on my fingers anyway um, I'm really really enjoying um, not only editing but putting together some footage for you and I hope you're enjoying looking at um, behind the scenes look at my little bit store um, if you don't already know uh, my name's Karen and I'm the founder of little bits creations which is currently um, kind of like a little bit of stickers enamel pins washi tape store over on Etsy I'll put a link in the description um, down below if you want to find out a little bit more um, so what have I been up to this week? Well, um, I am still teaching full time online uh, with five year olds, which has its own little um, drawbacks. But then every now and then they'll do something really, really funny that just makes it all so worthwhile. And um, so that's what I'm doing in the week full time, um, about from eight to five every day. And then two evenings of the week, I dedicate to a little bit store. And I then spend the weekend packaging orders, and getting everything ready and shipping them. Um, so what I, do I have for you in this vlog today? Day. I have firstly um, some packing footage which you've just seen I've also been asked if I can do a little um, snippet on how I create my enamel pins so apologies the printer's printing away over there <sighs> what do you do anyway um, I thought I'd show some behind the scenes footage of how I make my enamel pins um, so I'm hoping that you enjoy looking at the enamel pins I thought I'd go from the sketching phrase to the creating a proof and how I attach the colours um, but I'll tell you a little bit more about that when you watch the footage. Um, I've also been working hard on creating some new sticker designs and I've got some planner stickers which are proving quite popular at the moment so you'll see a little bit of footage of my Cricut machine cutting them and um, finally I'm packaging up uh, one of my biggest orders so far so thank you very much to my lovely customers and um, but I hope you enjoy it. I'll try like last um, vlog to come back on the end and say goodbye but um, anyway whatever you're doing have yourself a lovely week. If you really have a request from particular footage um, just let me know and I'll see what I can do. So I opened up a new document and then inserted my Terry the Turtle sketch that I was happy with. I tried to make sure the lines were as clear as possible um, and then I thought it was important to then create a layer underneath to start colouring. I like to rename my layers just so I don't get confused um, and when I come back to do some editing it makes it a lot easier um, to see what layer I'm on. After using Photoshop where I'm used to just clicking on the layer and it goes straight there, I found um, one of the things with Procreate is actually it, it's a little bit more tedious naming layers but it doesn't take too long. So I've named the first layer dark green and then I also created a colour palette swatch um, of the colours I wanted to use so picking up the dark green and using a blocking colour um, a downloaded set of line art digital brushes that I like to use particularly when I'm blocking in colour um, so using the dark green I like to go over and just do the outline of the shape first making sure again that it's on a separate layer underneath the line art work I find this quite therapeutic actually <laughs> it's just like drawing something about drawing um, you can be having one of the worst days and then you go back to doing some drawing. Um, I know a lot of people like to use the, the blocking colour, um, which I'll probably try in a minute, but I like to go around as carefully as I can. The pots that aren't going to be the same colour, as I'm doing with the eyes. And then that's a dropping colour, but you just need to be careful that it won't always fill the whole space. So. 
I will tend to zoom back towards the end and check I'm not missing anything. Adjusting the brush size is also quite useful. I'm just using the tab over at the side. One of the things I love about Procreate is that you can just use your fingers to zoom in and zoom out again, which is quite nice. It's almost like having um, a real pen or a sketchbook. I know it's not the same as, you know, having the, the materials in front of you, but um, I really enjoy using Procreate. And even for little sketches that I do, I'm not professional by any means, but I'm learning a lot. Um, I then decided I'd like to do the spots that are on Terry the Turtle's legs in the same colour. Um, just to try um, a limited colour palette this time. Some of my designs have been quite detailed. And this is all happening on the same layer again. Yeah, and then zooming in, zooming out just to check I'm happy. Hopefully you can see my screen okay today. Um, I am saving up for various things like new lighting and the all important filming camera bit. Hopefully you get the idea. Okay, so now that I'm happy with that, um, the next thing is to create um, using the next colour. So I've chosen a lighter green, uh, same pen, brush this time, and I've put another layer. Um, so I'm going to rename the layer. Uh, I bet you can guess. <laughs> Terry the Turtle Light Green. I'm so predictable sometimes. Uh, the more vlogs you watch, the more you'll get to know. I am very much set in my ways. Okay, so using the light green, I'm then going to go along and um, make that the secondary colour for the neck. Just making sure I'm on the correct layer still. Uh, for this particular one, I want to make sure that I've got the light green on a layer above the dark green. Um, and you'll see why in a little bit when I go to do the spots on the head. And dropping in a colour. And then from the corner of my eye, I can spot that I've got a bludge on the page. And I'm not going to cope with that for very long. <laughs> so I'll have to erase it. Um, some people come back and do that at the end. But it does get annoying trying to work out. It's literally, I've just lent on the page as I was... Um, zooming in and zooming out. Um, so I'm quite happy with that. Um, I ummed and nod over what colour to do underneath the shell and I'll probably go back and um, change that later on anyway. So now this is the reason why the layer is above the dark green because I can just literally colour on top and then if I make a mistake I can easily rub that out without rubbing out the green as well. Um, I am definitely a fan of layers. And I've spotted um, a floor already. <laughs> so I can see a little bit of white from behind. So just going back to that dark green layer, making sure I'm happy with it. Now, one of the reasons I created Terry the Turtle is um, I actually grew up in Australia. So I remember vividly as a young child spending time on the beach and really early in the morning trying to sit and watching some of the little um, turtle eggs hatch and making their way to the shore and um, when I was deciding on a new design for a pin it, it wasn't hard um, to choose really because I've always wanted to do a little turtle pin and hopefully um, he turns out as brilliantly as I hope he will and if not it doesn't matter because I can go back and try again but I'm quite happy with the sketch so far and just hoping the colours will look okay when it comes back as a pin. Um, once again going around. Um, 
the Procreate um, does actually come with quite a few brushes that are already um, installed as part of the program but over probably the last year or so since I've had my iPad in the program I've um, I've discovered some other lovely brushes too. I know Bardo brushes do some quite nice ones. Um, the line art ones that I'm using at the moment. And I'm hoping to also do some more tutorials um, using Procreate in the future for you. So hopefully if you haven't nodded off by now, <laughs> you might enjoy seeing some more content. Okay. You're just going around the colour. So part of my thinking behind this pin design is I want to try adding some glitter to the shell. So I do think that I um I will inquire about having possibly gold glitter on the shell. I think I might make the actual shell a nice brown colour. Um, we'll soon discover which one I think works. I've chosen one for my colour palette but hopefully that will be okay. So just going around the outline and then around the smaller parts. And then zooming, um, zooming back out again just to make sure I'm happy with how it looks. Okay, so using again, probably um, going to go with, I found a, like a nice aqua colour. Um, creating a new layer. I could have like a guess the layer name, couldn't I really? <laughs> And you won't believe it, but I call it shell. <laughs> I decided to do the shell before I did the eyes, but that's fine. And that was a bit of a problem because autocorrect kept trying to pick up other things. But anyway, that's a boring fact. You don't need to know that. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so I'm going to use um, what I thought was quite a nice brown colour. I can go back and change the palettes if I wanted to, um, just by dragging and dropping a slightly different colour on top. I decided I actually would put the shell layer underneath the green um, because predominantly I didn't really want any brown to accidentally show through the face. Okay, and again, yeah, I've, I've come to the decision that I don't like that green part of the shell, so I changed it. <laughs> as long as I could predict that I was going to do that when I first did it. Anyway. Part of the joy of using Procreate is you can very easily change things and make things different. One of my favourite features is using two fingers to tap the screen to undo something. But now I'm finding, um, I don't know if you use Procreate but or if you haven't, um, when I go back to normal work such as in Photoshop or even sketching on a piece of paper, I keep tapping the screen with two fingers or the page with two screen fingers and getting annoyed that it's not undoing it. But um, I think that's just a sign that I use Procreate way too often. That's okay. Okay, I'm filling the whole of the turtle shell. I quite like that these colours look nice together. Um, the actual colours on the screen are slightly different um, in recording than what they are. And I'm hoping to show you the proof soon um, of how to create a proof for a manufacturer. And you'll see there is a slight difference, but it's just because of the recording camera I'm using. But um, I mean, they're fairly close, but. I, I believe the green's a little bit brighter than the one I've chosen, so... Okay, now I'm um, to go in an aqua for the eyes. And working on my colour palette, it did take me a long time to try and choose some colours, um, but hopefully, I'm hoping a little bit of brightness in the eyes might stand out more. Okay, then when coming across the eyes, um, Again, I've actually just kept this on the same layer for the eyes. I ended up going with, um, it's not so clear on the screen, but it's like a light grey colour. 
and I just as I was happy with how the eyes looked but I just wasn't sure about how it would look on the overall pin design um, if I did it all solid black I thought he would look a bit um, well freaky actually <laughs> with black eyes now I do like to um, I put the white on a slightly different layer on your notice I've, I've turned the background white off uh, which makes the colors look really really pale actually um, my camera's having a bit of a hard time picking it up so sorry about that but um, you'll see when I put the white back on the colors will come back in but it just the reason I do this is just to make sure if there's any parts like the green um, so I'll click down on that layer which are over the line I'd like to um, make sure I can fix it up or touch it up and check if there's any gaps showing through um, that I can fix it at this stage. It is something I do whenever I do all my sketches um, before I save it and I'm happy with it is I will just go around like I am with the face and just check that there aren't parts um, that are sticking out so, and just touching it up really. Then again when I pull it into Photoshop I also do a little bit of a touch up phase as well just to make sure I'm happy with it. You can also change the colour settings a lot easier in Photoshop. Um, many people use Illustrator but I must be honest I need to, to spend longer work on Illustrator um, and many of the lines in Illustrator just look a little bit too uniform for me. I, I'm struggling with getting that um, hand stroke effect in Illustrator but um, that's something to work on isn't it? Okay. So there's my Terry the turtle and I think he's turned out quite cute. Um, again, putting him on the white background, you can see the colors a bit more clearly. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull Terry turtle into Photoshop and I'm going to share with you um, some of the proofs that I've already created uh, ready to send to my manufacturer. So uh, let's have a look at those. Okay, so now that you've got your little Terry the Turtle image created, um, or whatever the image is you're going to be working on, the next step is to create what's called a proof um, for the manufacturer to use. Now, this is by no means the perfect way to do it, but it's just what I do and how I'm creating my proofs. So I thought you might like to have a little look as well. So if we look at this file, what I've done is I've created a four by four inch file and I've put the color setting we go up into here um, so I've made the color mode actually a CMYK color mode only because when printing um, I think if you look at Pantone colors which we're going to have a little look at in a minute um, you'll see that I think the CMY color works best now the only thing to bear in mind when you go to save this file um, on CMYK color mode you can happily save it as a Photoshop file still um, which means keeping all the layers but when you go to save it, if you wanted a transparent background as it is with this, you'll actually have to swap the color mode back to RGB or it won't let you save it on a transparent background. Um, don't ask me why, I'm sure there's a reason behind it, but um, just to keep that in mind. So what I tend to do is I'll create it in CMY color mode for the proof and to send the manufacturer. Um, but when I go back and want to save it myself, I'll also save it as RGB. Anyway, a little bit of boring information for you. So how I've set it up, I've opened up um, my Terry file that I've created, just move that little one back a bit, and I've put it in the middle of my 4 inch by 4 inch screen um, page, and then what I've done is I've created a few little Pantone colours, and if I show you the best way to do that, I'm just going to click on, for example, this one here, and by holding control, you can see the little circle and then if I just click off that one to show you how I did it I use the eyedropper tool to pick up the color I'm gonna put a new layer in and I'm just gonna take my paintbrush and literally just fill that in the color that I've chosen and I could do I deselect that one I could do that for all the colors as well and you'll see that the color mode will change Okay. And that's really how I'm then creating my little circles. For the Pantone colour, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to get the eyedropper tool and make sure. I'm going to then double click on this colour one here. And I'm going to go across to the, what's called the colour libraries. And I know a lot of people uh, purchase, they are quite expensive, a Pantone colour book. 
that is probably the best way if you want to make sure the colors are completely accurate print it out have a little look and make sure you're happy but for me this seems to be working um so if i just show you that again i'm going to click i'm going to go to color libraries and then i go to pantone and whatever the color is pantone 2729c i then come up and i type that in um, and then it works with all the other colors so again double click Go to Color Libraries and I put this in as Pantone 636C and I typed it in. Now I'm literally just creating a layer, a text layer where I type in what it's going to be there. Um, this is a Photoshop file at the moment so I can come back. You might see I've got some actually, um, I've used this template to pull in some of my other designs and I like to give the manufacturer a few more little um, ideas within this proof so I've decided it's going to be 1.25 inches in height it's hard enamel I'd like black nickel plating um, I did want white for the eyes now when you see the final little Terry the turtle pin I'm going to show you as part of the process of going back and forth with a manufacturer we decided to make the grey um, black in the end and it actually did look a lot better so those things can happen when you're talking to your manufacturer um, but there you go that's a setup and that's how I created my proofs extras like gold glitter we went for gold glitter on the shell um, I decided I want black rubber backings as well Okay, so there you have the proof for Terry the Turtle hard enamel pin um, by Little Bits Creations. And while we're here, you might like to actually see some of my other proofs. Um, so here's my setup for Felix the Fox. Again, I've suggested 1.5 inches in height, and I actually really, really liked the overall height of this one. And you've also got um, really just unlimited number of colours. I also found out that I could go, instead of rose gold plating, which I had on this initial proof, uh, working again with my manufacturer, I asked for a sample of the different platings, and he was really, really helpful in sending me some samples of those, and I went with the copper plating in the end, and after this um, little section I will show how the pins turned out, um, so you can see the final results. But I love the Felix the Fox actually, and I was really pleased with him. Again, I've decided to um, to give a few little pointers. I'd like a double class on the back, please. And I um, I went with the gold plating um, for the butterfly class, but then I sourced out some of the orange heart-shaped ones myself, um, which are quite easy to pick up. You can purchase them actually from Etsy, or I think Alibaba have some, but I managed to, to actually source these from a UK company, so I was really pleased with that, trying to do it as much as I can support a UK company. Let's have a look at some of the others. So there's Lola's Proof. It was so true to life, I couldn't believe it, how the pin turned out compared to the proof here. A lot more colours were in this design and it was a lot more detailed. If I zoom in, I was a little bit worried, for example, if the, the leaves and the cheek in the corner would be a little bit too small. And that's part of the process, really. Um, the more pin designs I've worked on, um, the more I work out of which colours stand out really well, which parts are too small. And every now and then I get a little bit ambitious and I'll go with a really detailed design, such as, here's Harmony the Whale. This is my most recent one. And really I think it was a little bit of a gamble I just didn't know how it was going to work out you'll notice a lot of the fine detail it's quite tiny but um, I'm gonna work again with my manufacturer he didn't change anything from my proof actually um, what you'll find is they have their own in-house artists and provided you give them the proof it doesn't have to be perfect Yes, so they will actually go away and vectorize it for you to create it to make what's called a mold. Um, if I zoom back out again, let's pop over and um, have a look back at Terry the Turtle. And so when they create the mold, you pay a fee. So I pay my manufacturer, it's about $100 um, American dollars to pay for a mold and then I pay a price on top of that and depending on your manufacturer they may come back with a certain amount um, until you're happy with it. My manufacturer has a standard amount and then the bigger the pin the, the higher the price per pin um, but I'll let you have that discussion with your manufacturer. Um, there's no real point me saying how much I make per pin um, because I need to keep a little bit of secrets to myself. Um, the 
the mold from my manufacturer they keep it for two years so I need um, to restock Terry at the moment actually because he's selling quite well and so that I won't have to pay the mold fee again for two years but I will have to pay for how many pins I want so I'm, I'm hoping this helps and um, if you have any questions please if you just let me know Okay lovelies, now that you have your um, proofs ready to go and you're happy with your pin design, the next step is to actually find a pin manufacturer. Um, so what I thought I would do is I would share with you the page that I really found the most useful um, through the whole process of trying to find a pin manufacturer. Now I completely um, understand that many people who make their pins and share vlogs or tutorials with you really don't want to share who the manufacturer is. And the main reason behind that is because I think they're just really, really worried that if they share the manufacturer with you and you think, fantastic, I'm going to invest all this money and I'm going to make my own pins and they don't turn out perfectly, um, I think they just really don't want you to come back and say to them, oh, hold on a minute, you said they were great, but I wasn't happy. So really it's personal choice and you need to to play around with some people but i am going to share with you um who i've decided to go with in the end and who i have been using now for just over a year so the first site i'm going to um, put a copy of the link in the description section in um, the information that goes with this vlog so hopefully that will help you um it's someone called pin lord and I came across this particular site um, because he has so many useful tips. It was created back in May 2018 and it's titled The Best Custom Enamel Pin Manufacturers and How to Work with Them. So if you go onto this page, um, I think it's really, really useful. There's lots of information there. Some of the most important ones that I found um, is what is the fair price to pay so he does say from experience you're looking at um, you have to pay a mold charge and he says between 135 US dollars um, up to 220 US dollars is what you could be really charged for your mold and 100 units of pins now when you come to decide how many pins you want I first started out thinking that 100 units was the absolute minimum I don't know why I reached that decision, maybe just reading this page. Um, but some of my newer pins, uh, such as Kira the Orca Whale, I just wasn't sure how solid black enamel pin would work out. So I was able to order just 50 units of the pins, um, but again, I was paying the same price um, for the mold fee as I would if I was to order 100 units of the pins. My manufacturer does charge the same mold price. Um, there isn't really much of a difference between the size of the pins and the mold price. The difference comes in when you're paying per pin so my one inch little Henry the Hedgehog pin per pin um, after I paid the mold fee is actually cheaper um, per pin than my 1.5 Felix the Fox pin if that makes sense anyway going on to more important things um, how the payment works I since I sincerely um, suggest that you try the pay 50% upfront once you're happy and then you don't pay 50% until you've seen a photograph of the real pin um, as it's been made. Uh, some manufacturers might ask for 100% upfront but you can always say look can I pay 50% um, you know, be honest with them, say I'm investing a lot of money into this, if it works well I will come back, I want to do more pins with you and I, I hopefully um, they'll let you pay the 50% up front and then the 50% on final production. It goes into that detail on this page anyway. Um, but the most important thing I found is down here. Um, so he's showed you um, a setup of how you might create your first email. And I really did use this as a nice template. Um, so hello or hi, I hope you're well. And some really important questions. Um, ask your manufacturer, how much will it cost me, for example, for 100 units of the pin? Um, how fast is your turnaround time? I didn't really use that question in my first email, but I did use a lot of the others. Like, do you accept payment 50% upfront? I took a, a snippet, so I inserted a PNG file um, or a PDF proof of the pin that I was intending to use. I didn't send the proof or anything, just a little snippet of what the pin might look like. Um, with a name, how many I was looking for, the size. So just bear in mind when you do the height of your pin. So for example, my um, Terry the Turtle was 1.25 inches high, but you need to also remember that that will be the 
the height of the tallest part of the pin or sometimes the width of the widest part of the pin. My little um, Henry Hedgehog, for example, is one inch in height, but that included the little dandelion he's holding. The actual body of Henry Hedgehog ended up being about three quarters of an inch. So if you really want the main part of your pin to be one inch, for example, you may actually opt to go 1.25 if there's little parts that they're holding onto or a tail of a whale, for example. I don't know if that's useful, but um, I think bearing in mind if I was to do Henry the Hedgehog again, uh, when the proof has run out because my manufacturer keeps it proof for two years so I'm about to restock on my Terry the turtle my fox my whales and my hedgehog this this month actually um, but I don't have to pay for the mold again the mold is actually already included for up to two years I just have to pay per pin um, next time I want to make Henry and the two years is up I'll probably make his mold a little bit um, bigger just so that I've got a lot more detail and you can see it more clearly. I am happy with him though, don't get me wrong. So um, once you've got that email set up, he does go down, gives you more advice. Um, and he then has come up, which is really useful, with four of his um, tested and tried manufacturers. So we've got um, Peter at Erich Gift, and he also quotes, now again, this is two years old, so it may be a little bit different. Um, the rough price you can expect to pay um, per 100 pins, the turnaround time, what they accept, um, and then beyond pins, yourstuffmade.com, Sabrina at Yay. I know there are some other people such as HP pins um, people tend to use. And to be honest, since I've started making enamel pins and putting posts on Instagram, and now that I have a YouTube account, I've actually had quite a few manufacturers contact me. I know JU pins are quite good as well. I've heard from some other people, but please, um, just you just have to try. I think um, I wish I could give you a, a definite. This is this is who's amazing, but I am going to. Are you ready? Reveal who I have been using, and that's Peter Erich Gift. Now I'm so impressed with the quality of the pins that I've had. In my very first batch, I also had like a bumblebee pin that I created as well, um, and a peaches pin. So in my first batch, the color of the peach kind of um, looked like it blended with the black and I, I it didn't look as good as I thought it should have um, so bearing in mind these are my first pins I thought it might have been my error I contacted uh, the manufacturer and he was so good that he sent another set of pins um, to me and the color was amazing so what I did um, is I also ordered some hedgehog ones again at the same time because I was so happy with them so there isn't always going to be a hundred percent it will be perfect but if you find the manufacturer you work with is really good at going back and forth and if you find something you're not happy with and they're you know within reason you can't get 100 pins and then say oh I want more um, there's a slight scratch on it because they're going to have scratches and things like that but other than that first um, peaches pin the color had bled on their machine um, every other pin I've had has been absolutely amazing so on roughly from 100 pins I end up with between 80 to 90 um, what I call A grade pins or B plus grade pins every now and then you'll have some scratches and things on them and that's very normal um, my Harmony the Whale pins I ordered 100 in the gold plating and 100 in the silver plating and I literally had 98 of each that I could use so I mean I cannot fault this company in that sense little things that they don't do as much as some other companies is yes they will offer glitter but not too many colors also the if the color of your um, rubber backing is important to you uh, Peter E. Rich Gift only really do the yellow and the black there are other companies that I can see from looking at vlogs and things that do all these different colors um, but I found myself just sourcing the rubber backings is actually um, it's not too bad and it gives me a chance to support some UK based companies at the same time um, so there without talking your ear off too much <laughs> I hope you found this helpful. Um, I really, really did because I didn't have a clue where to start. I had a design. Um, I'd found out a little bit by watching tutorials and YouTube clips of about the proofs and things. But um, yeah, so hopefully you'll find that useful. And um, if I can help and you want to ask me any questions, please do. Maybe our lives were not meant to collide
it's time to decide what to do with the fact that it happens to us all. From time to time, it all comes around, and no one knows the end. Where are So here he is, little Terry the turtle, um, and I think, hopefully that looks okay, he looks super cute, and I ended up having glitter on his shell, and um, I'm just really, really happy overall with the quality, and he has a black rubber, backings, and a nickel as well, so yeah, super happy with how Terry the turtle turned out. I really hope you found this um, behind the scenes useful of how to make an enamel pin and if you have any questions please as always if you pop them in the comment section um, underneath this vlog. While I'm here I thought I might as well also show you the enamel whale pins which was also one of the proofs that we looked at today. That's one in silver. There's the one in gold. Again, I went with the black rubber backings. Yeah. And we also looked at a load of the koala. So here's a Lola. Again, really, really cute. Very shiny. I'm really happy with how this one turned out. If you go back and look at the proof, it's pretty much identical actually. And um, the screen print is on the nose and on the eyes as well. And the last one I think we showed you, wasn't it, was a little Felix the Fox. Here he is. Felix is super cute too. And as part of the Felix the Fox Kickstarter project that I was working on, I actually do have some of the foiled backing cards left. Um, so there he is. Depending on the angle, um, he's quite bright and shiny. But there he is on his own little backing card. I don't have many of those ones left. I think I have about 12 of these backing cards left with the foil edging. Um, but then after that, there's a normal backing card, which is still super cute. It just doesn't have the foil. Um, there you go. And here's our little Terry the Turtle again. Hi again. Um, so I thought I'd put back on the end uh, before I put um, some packaging footage for you and just say thank you so much if you've stuck out with the studio for this long. Good job. <laughs> um, so I also wanted to um, share with you uh, some of the creators that really got me inspired into um, not only continuing with my ideas for my Etsy store, but also um, venturing forth and trying the whole vlogging situation. I honestly never thought I would be somebody who would put myself in front of a camera and you'll notice that I only do certain views <laughs> but anyway um so one of those people the first person is the lovely um Catherine over in Catnip I mean I could watch her vlogs for ages and ages and she's really inspired me in so many ways um I believe she started out in like her bedroom in a small little space in her um house like i'm starting in a tiny little um space in a joint office which i call my studio um but and then she's now ventured and gone so far and she's got um she's got her own studio and then she's got a larger studio and oh, it just inspires me so much and she works so so hard and but is very honest about everything so if i could follow not in her footsteps in my own footsteps but um just thinking that things can happen and i hope that helps you um if you're sitting behind a camera and thinking oh i want to vlog but i can't do it well um i'm having a go and I, I've had more than five views, so that was brilliant. Um, actually, I've got um, 20 subscribers last time I looked, so um, I'm just so excited. Thank you. Um, the other person, um, I've got this here. So this is from, um, so it's Love Emily. So thank you, Emily. Emily, um, she had this uh, campaign called Magical Things Can Happen. And I actually use one of her planners here. Um, so her name's Emily, and she's over on Emily Harvey Arts. So what I'll do is I'll put a link to both Emily Harvey and um, Catherine at Catnip 
in my comments section down below so you can have a look but I'm sure if you're coming to my vlog you definitely know who they are because they have thousands and thousands of, subscri of subscribers um one day <laughs> but um anyway I hope you really enjoy the vlog today and um as I said I'm going to finish with a little bit of packaging footing um but yeah footy footage <laughs> Time to go, people. Time to go. Anyway, bye. Wish that I could stay in this moment for Sunday or